what's up nerds? It's Paul here at Radio Free Hammer Hall. Today, we are going to do a deep dive on Grand Strategies. Now, Grand Strategies, these are part of your list building in Age of Sigmar 3rd Edition. Uh, they may or may not influence your army construction. Um, I think perhaps uh, you'll probably build your army first, pick a Grand Strategy, and maybe go back and tweak your army to be a little bit better with the Grand Strategy. Um, overall, you're going to be scoring three points if you complete your grand strategy, which is looking at like 10 to 15 percent, maybe 20 percent of your total possible score in a game. So it's pretty valuable. Um, tournament over the weekend, um, the TO observed that there were a lot of games that were being decided by their grand strategies, whether or not they were completed. So it is definitely pretty important. Now there's varied types of these for different sorts of armies. Some are going to be harder than others for different lists or maybe even impossible for some armies to complete. Um, you know, there's eight different grand strategies as we're going to go through them, so you need to choose wisely in your list building to make sure that you get the one that is going to be best for you. So a quick review of the grand strategies off the top. Sever the head, you have to kill all of the enemy heroes. Hold the line, you have to have at least one battle line unit survive the match. Vendetta, you have to kill your opponent's general, but also keep yours alive. Dominating presence, finish the game with the most units alive. Beastmaster, have at least one monster survive. Prized Sorcery have at least one Wizard survive. Pillars of Belief have at least one Priest survive. And Predator's Domain control more terrain than your opponent at the end of the game. Um, I'm going to just be right up front with this. I hate Predator's Domain. I hope I never run into anyone playing this. Um, I I'll go into it more later, but... I don't like this. GW, please stop writing rules like this. Thank you. So, I'm going to deep dive on each one individually. Sever the head. So the exact wording of this, when the battle ends, you complete this grand strategy if there are no heroes from your opponent's starting army on the battlefield. So this one is really good for shooting armies. Uh, you can just go target the heroes, and very commonly, you're going to be targeting heroes anyway because they're going to be synergy pieces that are going to be force multipliers for your opponent so you want to take out the heroes very frequently so this is just really kind of directing you to do the same thing that you would already be doing otherwise the difficulty here is going to vary based on your opponent's army composition so if your opponent has a lot of hard to kill heroes this could be very very difficult if your opponent is just little five wound foot heroes it's going to be really easy um on the difficult side i mean this means you might have to kill archeon or gotrek or marathi or alariel or any number of other really hard to kill heroes um and a big note here is a lot of lists are designed to protect their important heroes so they'll be taking artifacts to protect their important heroes or uh, playing in such a way that their heroes are defended well so this one can be a little bit of a challenge especially for melee only armies hold the line this one is definitely my personal favorite when the battle ends you complete this grand strategy if there are any battle line units from your starting army on the battlefield um this varies a lot based on what your own army composition looks like some armies are just lousy with battle line right like iron jaws and nurgle for example are like everything is battle line Skaven have really hard to kill battle line because they're usually big swarms of rats. So there are some armies, like uh, maybe Caradron Overlords, that are going to be running minimum battle line very frequently. They're kind of fragile. They're not going to take a hit really well. So this is not going to be a good choice for armies like that. 
if you are going to be using this, it's probably going to be very, very easy for you. And if it's not going to be very easy, and by very easy, I mean you're playing an army that's going to basically have to get tabled to fail this. Um, if it's not going to be that kind of easy, there's probably another grand strategy that's going to be better for you. Um, I think it's kind of going to be the default grand strategy for a lot of folks, and if it's not easy for you, then you find another one. Vendetta. When the battle ends, you complete this grand strategy. If the model chosen to be your opponent's general has been slain, and the model chosen to be your general has not been slain. Please note, this does not include other heroes that count as a general. It has to be the chosen general uh, has to be slain, and you have to keep yours alive. So, this is, again, going to vary a lot based on what generals are selected. If your general is Archeon, then this isn't going to be too bad for you to do. You're going to be able to keep him alive pretty easily, and you know odds are you can hunt down your opponent's general fairly easily. Uh, if your opponent's general is Archeon, you could have a major problem, um, or any number of other uh, difficult-to-kill heroes. This could be a good choice for some shooting armies when you're going to be able to keep your general well defended, or if your general is one of those durable heroes as well. Um, but a lot of shooting armies are going to have a fragile general that they need to hide, so you got to be careful with this one. Um, your opponent's general is usually going to be a target, um, but some aren't always the prime target that you're really looking at when you are going after your opponent. Sometimes they're the general for just unlocking certain battle line and aren't that much of a value to the rest of the army. Uh, same goes for you, though. Uh, your general isn't necessarily going to be the linchpin of your army or be especially durable, so this might not be the best choice for a lot of armies. Dominating Presence. When the battle ends, you complete this grand strategy. If there are more units from your starting army on the battlefield than there are units from your opponent's starting army on the battlefield. So this is really good for armies with a high unit count. Um, the downside of that is you're going to have a high drop count more than likely. So you're not going to get the choice to go first and you're going to be sort of at the mercy of your opponent. And speaking of being at the mercy of your opponent, uh, this is all going to depend on how killy your opponent's army is and how many units they have in their army. For some armies, this is just kind of like a win more. Um, I'm thinking about armies that are very combat oriented, that their goal is to really sort of pin you down and kill all your stuff so you can't win, like Iron Jaws is uh, frequently played that way. So this could be a good option for armies like that that are just really interested in getting in a scrap. Beast Master. When the battle ends, you complete this grand strategy if there are any monsters from your starting army on the battlefield. Some armies just don't have monsters, so they can't do this. Um, the one caveat is everyone can take a Mega Gargant, so it's not totally impossible, but it's basically impossible because there's a lot of armies that just simply wouldn't want to take a Mega Gargant, especially not to just have this grand strategy. It's a good choice for armies that play a bunch of durable monsters, so things like Beast Claw Raiders, Flesh Eater Quartz, Sons of Bayamat, um, there's others as well. You know, if you're running Archeon and another monster in your list, that might be a good choice. If you're running three Great Unclean ones, this could be a good choice. Um, it, this one, I think, is either like a slam dunk for your army or it's just not a good choice at all. Um, it, it's going to be pretty obvious in your list building, like if you have four durable monsters in your list, then um, you're probably going to want to pick this one. 
prized sorcery. So when the battle ends, you complete this grand strategy if there are any wizards from your starting army on the battlefield. Again, this is going to be impossible for some armies, corn, fire slayers, Karadron overlords, um, probably a couple of others as well that I'm not thinking of off the top of my head. They're just armies that have no wizards. Um, this is really great for armies like Lumineth, where you have units that are wizards. It's also great if you just have durable wizards. Um, again, coming back to Archeon, he's also a wizard. Um, he seems to just help you with all of your grand strategies. Um, there are also army lists that are just going to have a whole bunch of wizards in them, and you can just hide them. Um, it's hard for your opponent to kill all of your heroes. Um, but the big warning here is that wizards are typically pretty fragile. Um, there's a decent number of monsters that are wizards um, or wizard heroes, and that helps, but your foot wizards are typically five wound guys with a six up save. So, um, not really too durable there. So for some lists, this could be a good idea. And for most lists, I think this is going to be a real challenge. Pillars of Belief, when the battle ends, you complete this grand strategy if there are any priests from your starting army on the battlefield. So for most armies, this is going to be impossible because they don't have any priests. Um, also, most priests are fragile, and even armies that have priests frequently aren't going to be running enough priests to really make this viable. I think Corn is probably the only army that I can think of that would be running enough priests that are durable enough to really make this a thing. Uh, maybe Skaven Pestilence as well, if you're running two Plague Furnaces, because um, those are also priests and they're 13 wounds with a 4-up, 5-up, so that could be an option as well. Um, but in general, I think this is going to be one of the ones that you see the least um, in play and is probably not going to be the right choice for most armies. And finally, Predator's Domain, the one that I absolutely hate. When the battle ends, you complete this grand strategy if you control more terrain features than your opponent. So this is creating a minigame of tracking which player controls what terrain throughout the game. So that's just an extra thing that needs to be tracked in an already complicated game, especially with 3rd edition. This is going to vary based on the terrain on the table, how the terrain is arranged. Uh, maybe this is good for units, or I'm sorry, armies that are fast and nimble, like uh, maybe Slanesh. Um, but in general, I just hate this because of the bookkeeping that's involved in it. So please, please, GW, stop writing rules like this. Take this out of the next General's Handbook and replace it with something better. Oh, all right, I hate to end on a sour note, but let's head to the summary. So there's a wide selection here, as you can see, and you'll probably be able to find one that works well for your army, almost regardless of what army you are playing. I think some are going to be much harder than others for certain armies, and there are some armies that are just going to struggle with this in general. Um... And then on the flip side, you have some armies that are going to basically need to be tabled in order to fail their grand strategy. Um, I know tournament this past weekend, I was playing Nurgle and uh, my grand strategy was hold the line and I got it all three games uh, without even trying that hard. The interesting thing about this is that these don't seem to really be adding any fun to the game. Like there's there's nothing um, there's nothing Timmy about these. They're really very like Johnny Spike oriented. They're really about strategy and gaminess and all of that. So it's 
it's going to be an interesting challenge for some people that, you know, this might just be a big afterthought and um, won't be that interesting. Or, you know, maybe you could kind of go to the Timmy side and say, I want to kill all my opponent's heroes and that's going to be my objective of the game. Um, you're probably not going to actually win that game uh, if that's your main focus, but it could be fun. I don't know. Um, keeping all of your big stompy monsters alive sounds like it could be fun, but the downside is you're probably going to be retreating your monsters out of combat in order to keep them alive in order to do the uh, Beastmaster. So, I don't know. It, it I like grand strategies from a gameplay perspective, but I struggle to see where it's going to do the big fun Timmy thing. It really just is not a game mechanic that does that. But overall, I like this a lot, and I think there's a lot of good options here. As always, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, turn on notifications, and support us on Patreon. Come join us on Facebook and Twitter. All the links are down in the description of the video. Thanks again for watching, and I will talk to you all later.